at this point, you're talking about a turn in the credit cycle, which is scary, yep. but you think it's manageable. You think that they're going to be able to, to orchestrate this where, where there's not a bad outcome? Yeah, and the interesting thing is it depends on how high the Fed pushes interest rates, but we're starting to see it in parts of the real estate market. We're starting to see bankruptcies. I mean, you look at the, the there's a bankruptcy index that's been increasing the last two quarters. So, um, if, but we see relief, relief in the 10-year Treasury. We'll see interest rates come down. That might prolong the credit cycle. Okay. Susan, I'm, I'm reading, you know, I, I don't like reading about peak, peak things, peak earnings, peak, uh, peak economy. Is this the peak? And it, what I need to know is when it hits a peak, is it a plateau? Or is it, a, or is it a, a Mount Everest where it's good, there's another side? Right. I don't think it necessarily has to be the peak, but I think that's what people are nervous about. Okay, okay, right? so They're that's, the, for that's that a concern. And so they keep looking over their shoulder. Is this the end? Have things peaked right. out? Have we topped out? I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think there's still a lot of opportunity in the equities market, but it is a tougher environment, certainly, than what we've had before. Do you think, are you a kid in a candy store too? And do you like chocolate? I'm, do you like I may be a kid in a candy store, but Keith I'm very bars? selective in you, what you I like. Okay. So. Well, they're all empty calories, really. I mean, none of it, uh, you just. At the moment, they all feel like empty calories because they go up and they go down. and then. Oh, you mean the market <clears throat> itself feels like uh, like a sugar hot? Well, you've been yes. saying that for, yes. Well, that's there's right. been like these days sugar. where you, yep. think, you think it tastes so sugary and then you realize right. actually empty calories by the end of the day. Right. Wow. Not so much. I mean, if you, if you were the market and you said, you know what? Uh, this time, I'm going to really keep throwing investors one way or the other with head fakes. I mean, is it not this effective like right now? This is like head fake, pick and roll, the whole thing. But big moves, you know, 800 up, 800 down. Well, I, I think it uh, gives us something. I think our ratings are... Uh, are, are, are Helps. I mean, there's, there's a Better than watching paint dry. <laughs> I don't know. I, the, the, the paint was pretty fun in 2017 uh, as it was drying. Anyway, so, um, great. Back to you. Energy. Energy and, and what else do you, that is, is, is real estate. Energy and real estate. Real estate seems like, like that would be vulnerable. So the, the real estate piece of it, what we're seeing right now is the, 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 the question is, in the fixed income space, where are we seeing potential opportunities? And the two opportunities that we're seeing right income. now is okay. real estate in an, in an energy. And we're in, we're in binds. With credit spreads widening out, um, there, there's opportunity out there that it, it, our, our basis or our, our belief is that we'll see supply decline going into the end of the year. It won't pick up probably until the end of January. So volatility, we expect spread volatility to actually decline. Susan, what, what, do you have specific uh, themes? Well, we're looking for individual opportunities. We're bottoms up fundamental investors. I think this is a, a market time where differences matter and you're gonna start to see this <clears throat> correlation in between names actually lower. So before we've had this market come up, everybody's enjoyed lower interest rates, this nice low cost base, everybody's been able to improve their margins. I don't think that continues in 2019, but I think there are well-run companies that can manage to make a difference. And while their cost of debt is rising, their input costs may be rising, they're going to be able to control it. And I think things start to spread out again. And you see some companies that are more what are, some of, the, what are some of the well-run companies? Well, I think you can see there's been a huge change. And you look at the consumer sector is always fun because people can relate to it. But if you look at the consumer sector, the way the consumer dynamic is changing is, you know, it's exponentially different than where it is. We talk about the, the decline in bricks and mortar, the importance of online presence. The companies that are really dedicating resources to capture the consumer and how that consumer spend has changed, I think provides opportunity. But that's an I, expensive proposition and it's tough to do when you're moving. Let's just take a retailer, for example. If I'm a traditional retailer and I'm suddenly trying to make myself a much more omnichannel online retailer too, it's not cheap. And no. even the companies that are doing that and doing it well or doing it fairly well, like a Target, are getting punished because investors don't want to see right, the, they're having the a hard time. taking to the margins. But I think the investors also are really worried about the consumer spend right now. And I think there's a lot of emotion in the market. I think you see with this crazy pricing, up 800, down 800 in the market, things are moving. Which I think means it makes what? a like difference. What's a company that's well run that, that you think, okay, they're, they're getting this right. You know, I think when you look at our... It, Clearly, the ones that have shifted to online presence, and the, you look at the ones that are already leading on the internet, and those are the ones where I think we go forward a year from now, and they're going to be doing a better job. I think the guys who are late to the game there are still suffering so and still going to be behind. So you like a target, or you like who, who, who are you talking about? I think any of the big retailers. I do. I do think the way consumers have changed their spending pattern. I do still like Target. I think Nordstrom's. We, you know, we we've, we've said we've stopped shopping at the bricks and mortar. There's a place for bricks and mortar. Nordstrom spent spending on the internet for years ahead of everyone else. 
they've got a better system. We still go back and we look at everybody's punishing the big online guys right now on Amazon, but Amazon's distribution system long term still can win out. So we've got a lot of different in different winners and losers, long term winners, I think that's your time frame. And you have to look to the longer term. Everybody's gonna have a tough quarter right now and I think everybody's gonna see that consumer spending pattern change. And I also think that feeds into this market nervousness and that's why we get so much volatility right now.